So we're looking at facilitated diffusion. So that's um, diffusion across a membrane, but with the aid of a protein. And, and opposed to uh, simple diffusion. So in simple diffusion, which is an example we already looked at, we have small molecules that are not polar, like gases, like oxygen, that can directly travel across a phospholipid bilayer from an area of high to an area of low concentration. So it's diffusion, high to low, and it's across the phospholipid bilayer itself. So we call that simple diffusion. With facilitated, we use a protein. So in a previous lecture, we looked at ion channels, which the channel themselves is fairly static, and the ion will just move across the membrane along its gradient from high to low concentration. They could have gates that can change shape and open and close, but the channel itself doesn't. In this case now, we're gonna look at something different. We're looking at carriers. A carrier is another type of transmembrane protein, but the whole entire carrier is going to change shape in order to allow the diffusion process to occur. So carriers are for molecules that are typically larger and polar. In the example here we're gonna look at is with glucose. So a glucose molecule uh, is C6H12O6. Right, so six oxygens, 12 hydrogens, six carbons. The glucose molecule can't get across the phospholipid bilayer. It's too big, too polar to do it. Even if it's a really high concentration in one area and low in the other, um, it, it can't get across. But your cell inside your cytoplasm, well, cells want glucose. Glucose is going to provide the cell with energy. It's going to use it for energy. And it doesn't want to have to expend energy to get the glucose. It would allow, prefer the glucose just move into the cell through diffusion. But in this case, there's a barrier to it. It's the membrane itself. So we have carriers that can help the glucose into the cell. The carriers are unique. So they have a binding site. So the binding site is very particular. It's specific for the molecule that it binds to, like a, like a receptor. So uh, it has a certain size, a certain shape, a certain charge and polarity to it that matches up. Or it's complementary to the molecule that it allows to be um, transported across the membrane. So in this case, glucose. Fructose wouldn't work, another sugar wouldn't work, only specif specific for glucose in this case. So a glucose molecule in an area of high concentration could move into this carrier protein. It would bind to this binding site, and that would trigger the carrier to change shape. We call that alternating conformation. So alternating means change. And conformation means shape. So the protein is going to change shape. It's going to change shape from this open to this side of the membrane, the outside, the extracellular side. And it's going to change so that now it's open to the inside of the cell. And the glucose molecule is then going to move from its area of high concentration to its area of low concentration. So it's going to diffuse simply from high to low. But instead of moving through the phospholipid bilayer, it moves through this carrier protein who changes shape to allow it to move. Now, the other thing you could notice is that the binding site itself, I drew here being kind of specific to bind the glucose, when it changes shape, not only does it open to the other side of the membrane, but you can see the binding site I kind of drew this sort of square-ish versus the roundish uh, depiction I drew for the glucose, um, which isn't really accurate, but it's just the, the way I drew it here so you can kind of get an idea. They don't match up. So circle and square, uh, it's not attracted to bind into the site anymore, so it's releasing the glucose so it can move into the cytoplasm. This is important because these particular carriers are what we refer to as unidirectional. They move or allow molecules to move in only one direction. So uni, one direction. So in this case, we go from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. So we think about this for, so it's still diffusion. It's always going to move from high to low concentration. And that unidirectional could be in to out. But that means it would always and only move in that one direction. For glucose, as the example, if the cell is going to use it for energy, the cell would like the glucose to move into the cell from high to low concentration. So it works in that direction. But if over time, let's say for example, the glucose concentration inside the cell built up and it was really low outside the cell, 
well, then the tendency would be for glucose to move out of the cell, but the cell would not want to lose its glucose. So here, a glucose molecule would say, try to get out of the cell. If it would enter this particular carrier, it wouldn't bind to the carrier. The carrier is in a particular orientation, conformation, a shape that doesn't bind glucose on this side. It only binds glucose on the outside. So it only moves it into the cell. This uh, overall concept is important for the next material that we're going to cover with active transport. Active transport proteins, what we call pumps, are going to move molecules across membranes in this way. They're going to move them from, from low to high concentration. Uh, and in doing so, they're going to require energy to do that. They are going to have many of the same properties uh, as the carrier. They're going to have specific unique binding sites. They're going to change shape typically as they work to kind of push the molecules across the membrane. Um, but there'll be some more, more to it where they have to gain energy from something in order to, to do that type of work in the cell. But they will bind and then change shape to work. They'll alter their conformation. So here we have facilitated diffusion with a carrier. It is unidirectional. And this is the, the next step in looking at transport across a membrane.